There was a bunch of differences between a GT500 and a KR. Those are shock towers, those are rear ends, they have a different, they have a different shock system, a staggered shock. They introduced the Cobra Jet motor, more horsepower even though it's rated at a little bit less. The heart and soul of a KR is obviously the Cobra Jet motor. Halfway through 1968, they didn't have the KR as an option, it was actually just the next progression in motors. And it made 335 horsepower even though that was way underrated. The police interceptor was actually rated at 355. These things were probably realistically close to 400 horsepower. This car is equipped with a four speed, a close ratio transmission, which makes it a ton of fun to drive. They all had nine inch rear ends. This one's got a posse in it. Actually, a lot of Shelby's didn't come with posies, which is kind of odd. And they had staggered rear shocks in the back end, and that helped with the wheel hop on these cars. And that was unique to the KRs as well. The front end, the shock towers, actually had these reinforcing braces that helped the car handle along with the export brace. But it is a lot of weight up front with this motor, and it really isn't a great handling car. It's more of a straight line highway cruiser. You got to keep in mind that 68 was the year that Ford took over the Shelby from Carroll Shelby and turned it more of it into a luxury car. Well, the neat thing about this car is it's such a correct car. Under the hood, like I said earlier, the heart and soul of a KR is the Cobra Jet motor, and it's got all the right pieces. It's got the original air cleaner, which was a Ram Air, with this plenum under the hood, which is really unique to just the KR. It's got the right shock towers here with the wraparound uh, braces in the front, and that's unique to a KR as well. It's got all the correct components. It's got a starter delay box, which is a real hard piece to find. It's got the right heat shield, S-tube, and snorkel, hard pieces to find. All the original smog equipment is intact on this car as well. It's got all the tags, all the right things under the hood. There are a bunch of items that are unique on the interior of a Shelby as well. This console, only on a 68 Shelby. These Stuart Warner gauges, the correct gauges, only again on a 68 Shelby. As far as the gauging goes, you had an 8,000 RPM tack, you had a 140 mile an hour speedo. Of course, all Shelby's had the deluxe interior, which included a wood grain dash, door panels, and the deluxe seats. Well, the body on a convertible Shelby is a little bit different than a Mustang, obviously. The whole front end comes in five pieces, and it's all fiberglass. The hood is fiberglass as well. The back end of the car, fiberglass trunk lid, end caps, tail light panel. These, these lights are actually out of a 65 T-Bird. It's also got fiberglass side scoops. This car here has been beautifully restored front to back. You can see the attention to detail everywhere, including the correct blackout stripes in the hood. And that was for actually the driver started driving these cars and the glare off the way the hood was shaped was reflecting in their eyes. So Shelby put this black decal there. You see a lot of cars without that. Well, this car has obviously had a ground up restoration. It's primer over spray undercarriage, all the suspensions detailed, every piece of chrome is new. The interior is highly detailed. The engine bay is done to the nines. The car runs and drives like brand new, has the right Lucas lamps, has the 10 spokes, has the polyglass tires. A car like this, this caliber, with these options, with this pedigree, has to be worth somewhere between $100 and $125,000.